So now these are the uh, the main drivers, uh, but of course uh, to accept these drivers there have been uh, a couple of challenges, and I put them into to three buckets here. Uh, the first one is the qualified materials and processes, and this is um, this is really like a must for anything to get into aerospace, and so we've also had this. And the way I want to present this is more or less uh, how we have approached these challenges, where we are, where we are, and uh, probably give you a, a feedback on um, yeah what has been done already. So in terms of qualified materials and processes, we had an approach of let's say going across uh, the pyramid of polymers. So my my material scientist colleagues like this graphic a lot, so I, I tend to follow that. Uh, we approached uh, let's say from an engineering polymers point of view, so the ones which are uh, most commonly used, so the polymides and so on. Uh, we have got some materials qualified there. And then we went on to the high performance polymers, which are of course um, uh, for specific conditions with, with better performance, but also with a higher price and so on. And the things which we have for the materials which we have actually qualified here uh, are two on the, on the engineering polymer side. So the one is uh, the polymide 12 base material, which we have. Uh, this has been globally qualified by Airbus for cabin interiors. And the other one is a polymide 11 based material, which is also aerospace uh, qualified. Um, and the next one is what is called as a HT23. That's a trade name, uh, just that you don't get confused. It basically means it has PEC as the primary component and 23 percent, so 23, uh, carbon fiber. And this is, um, let's say, the next step in terms of polymer um, in, in aircraft cabins. And this is what we are, where we see also a lot of applications coming up. And in the next slides, I just give you a little bit more, let's say, meat to go with these claims. Um, the first thing is really the, the low temp solution, which I just mentioned. Um, basically, we were qualified by Airbus as a supplier, uh, but also what it means is that the material, so the polymide 12 based material, as well as the process on uh, EOS system. So the ones who are not familiar with it, this is the smaller system. And this is a bigger system in terms of the, uh, the envelope. So the process on that systems have also been qualified. Uh, so this is a polymide material at the end of the day. So the scope is restricted. So it is restricted to non-structural applications which have to fulfill fire, smoke and tox, but not uh, heat release. And the qualification is valid for the Airbus group uh, globally. And we have been qualified as a supplier for this material. And this is, let's say the rollout is happening uh, as we talk in terms of the, the material available to be uh, bought for, for, for anyone. But now the, the next challenge is to really make, does it make economically sense? And I think this is really uh, a question which is specific to your need and has to be answered uh, with your context. But what I would like to share is, let's say the key success factors to crack a, a positive business case. Uh, and of course the enablers here are uh, cost saving on a part by part basis. Uh, and also um, decreasing the lead time and thereby faster aircraft turnaround time. So here I think uh, the, uh, let's say, choosing the right applications is key. Of course, this is known. Uh, but I think here we could actually talk of um, uh, two main, um, let's say, learnings. One is really the fact that uh, we should not um, approach this on a reactive level, meaning that we just took, uh, take a couple of parts that is required ad hoc and do it. Uh, but we should approach it on an overarching level, uh, thereby looking at, let's say, the, the, uh, the bigger list of parts which is going through your organization, and this is very critical, uh, to increase the hit ratio of finding the right part with the business case. Uh, and the second one is the fact that we have to approach these first steps, especially with an sort of interdisciplinary uh, setup uh, with an aerospace and a additive sort of combined team. So in the first step, of course, it's more the additive lens to kind of short uh, down select the, uh, the first pool of candidates. Uh, but then you look at from an aerospace plus additive point of view to get to those hidden jumps, if I, if I, may, if I may call that. And the second um, fact is really the reactivity in-house. So basically um, what we are looking at here is that, again, like I said, we are looking at a flexible asset which can uh, cater to your aggregated demand. And this you can do in-house, so to say, with additive. So basically, you can aggregate the demand and you can react in a much, much more faster manner. Uh, and of course, the obvious question that from zero to a position where you can do that is also not so complex or so 
time taking time taking and ideally we could use that as a pilot project to to get this done thanks for watching this video if you liked it please give it a thumb up and if you'd like to have further information about educational content or other webinars from eos just click the links in the description box below we hope to see you soon in one of our next videos until then go and subscribe our channel bye